Hi, this is Stephen Rosell, Senior Technical Specialist at Autodesk, and I'm going to do a two-part series on how to use XGen in order to create geometry that could potentially be used for game character hair. So in the first part of the series, I'm going to talk about just the basic workflow for using what are called XGen guides in order to generate geometry. So what you see here is a character uh, from the game Witcher 3. This is Gerard, uh, on loan to us by a company called CD Projekt Red. So I want to give them a quick plug. What you can see, this is uh, XGen hair based on lots of instances. So if I pull in here, you can see that I've got hundreds of thousands or tens of thousands at least hairs, probably more like hundreds of thousands. And these obviously look great, but they're not exactly game friendly. They're not they're not uh, really renderable in, in real time in a game engine. So what I can do is use elements of XGen in order to create a similar look with geometry. So we'll start by going over the basic uh, groom that we have here. So we've got something called a collection, which has got like a group of different descriptions. So the parts and pieces of the hair are made up of descriptions. So I've got the flyaways here, which are basically uh, the hero hairs. And then I've got the nape of the neck, which is actually the neck hair there, the back of the hair. And then I've got, uh, for instance, the uh, head hair, which is the, the rest of it essentially. And then I've got a ponytail as well. Let's focus in on just the flyaways, which again are the hero hairs. And that's a much sparser kind of collection of hairs, but you can still see if I pull in, I'm dealing with individual strands of hairs. Now these are based on guides. Now guides are not visible currently, but what guides are are essentially single curves that will basically represent the starting point direction and the, the shape of the resulting instances. So. I've got a couple of ways I can work with these. Uh, I can select the guides themselves, and then I can go in and grab specific points on the guides. And depending on whether I have soft selection or not, I can grab individual points, or I can turn soft selection on and I can get kind of a broader kind of fall off across lots of objects. And then that in turn affects the underlying instances. Now, another thing I can do if I undo those few steps is I can actually grab all of these guide curves and I can go into a sculpt mode. This is on the XGen shelf, and it's essentially a, a tool that allows me to go in and sculpt directly on the guides. So now these guides, I can basically kind of, you know, refine and shape to my liking, and then ultimately those will generate instances. But again, I don't want to generate instances. I want to actually create geometry. So let's go back a few steps to where I kind of started here, something like that. We'll talk about how I can actually use this to create geometry. Now these are actually just simple curves, but they're not standard Maya curves. These are special XGen curves. Even though they've got control points, much like a NURBS, they're not technically NURBS curves. So what I can do in XGen is go to the Utilities tab, and in here we've got a whole bunch of different utilities that do a number of different things, but I wanna find the one that says Guides to Curves, and I'm going to convert these, and let's just actually go in, and I don't remember if I've select them, but let's actually select them and convert them, and now I'll actually get a series of standard NURBS curves. So now that these are NURBS curves, I can use a variety of tools to generate surfaces. Now, of course, under the mod modeling menu, I've got a whole suite of tools for surfaces. However, these are somewhat difficult to use and not the most appropriate way to generate cards from these guides. Instead, we have a new tool under bonus tools uh, under modeling that allows you to create two different types of geometry. One is a tube. So you simply say curve to tube, and then that will actually generate um, closed tubes, pipes, or ribbon, or not ribbons, but uh, let's say antennas or tentacles or whatever they need to be. Not applicable for hair, but the other one, ribbon, will actually create flat cards. Now let's uh, apply that and we'll just go in and we'll turn off the uh, visual representation of the instances. And we'll take a look in the channel box and with these cards selected, and I now have controls over things like the width, uh, things like the orientation, things like the taper. Now you don't want to taper hair cards too much because it will distort the UVs, but you can add that if you want. And then of course, things like divisions along the length and the width and so on. Now you can do this all in mass or you can grab individual cards and you can start to manipulate these separate from one another. So I can take this one and if I wanna align the base along the scalp there, I can go in, grab the orientation, align that. You can see I get some inner penetration here with the eyebrow. So then I can use the twist to correct any uh, kind of angular problems that I have. So very quickly, 
I can go in kind of one by one, uh, either in groups or in individual kind of mode and start to correct not only the orientation, but also the twist and divisions and whatnot uh, so that it kind of conforms to the shape of the head. So that uh, looks pretty good just in terms of the general cards. Now, depending on how I have this set up, I can always go in and just automatically apply a material, and I've already got a material created that will apply a simple texture to this. So let's turn off my shadows uh, so I can get a kind of clearer look at, at a clearer view of what that looks like. But as you can see, with a simple texture, I'm now kind of mimicking the look of those instanced hairs. And there's always a connection back to the original curve. So if I were to go in and grab that original curve, I can actually grab a point on that. And using soft select, I can basically go in and I can start to refine and shape the underlying curve. And then that in turn is going to affect the, the resulting mesh. So a very simple, straightforward way of generating geometry using the guides. Now, one other thing to point out is that in my 2017, we included a library, a simple library of hair textures that you can use as kind of a prototyping, uh, or you can use these for the final results, really up to you. But if you go to uh, my 2017 installation under presets, assets, textures, we've got a series of uh, artist created cards that you can use in order to either prototype kind of a workflow for this hair or to actually use as a final result. And you can essentially assign these various sections of hair strands to different cards to create variation or variety within the, the overall look of the hair. So let's take the geometry that was created here and we'll just hide that. And uh, actually we'll hide these curves as well. And I'll show you kind of an end result. Uh, this is actually a hair groom that was created um, in a matter of, I'd say a day and a half or two days uh, using XGen uh, to create the basic look of the hair and then going through a conversion process in order to essentially generate geometry to create the uh, the kind of texture look for the end result. So there's one more technique that I want to talk about in terms of actually using XGen instancing to create areas of more density. So if you want to create individual hairs, you can just do that directly from the guides. But in cases like this with the nape of the neck where I've got many, many more pieces of geometry, you can actually use XGen instancing to do that in a more procedural manner.